Hey guys, before the video begins, I would like to make a very important announcement in regards to a new channel made by a friend of mine, Kelly Productions. He has created a new channel named The Watch. It's a channel dedicated to making superhero films and miniseries of a new universe that has been created and named The Watch. And the first film is out right now. If you follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or even on this very channel, you know I've spoken about a film that's been involved that I've been involved with. Well, this is it. The Midnight Warden. I'd highly appreciate it if you guys subscribed to this channel, liked the video, turned on notifications, and shared this film with your friends so we can make more films in the future. The more awareness of our films, the more we can make. You can find a link to the channel in the description below of this video, or click on my channel and go to the section channels, and it will be there as we speak. And with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoy today's video. What's going on, buddy? My name is Zell Prince. Welcome to another reaction video. Now, today I have something a little bit different than what I usually do in terms of like SCP reactions, animation reactions, trailer reactions. Today we're going to have an explanation reaction because a few weeks ago when that video came out, I was away at Tennessee, so that video was ready, already ready, set to go out. I watched a video called The Stalker by an animator that I found on, on uh, YouTube. But I... It did, I thought it was just a fan-made animation of just something completely original. But, to my surprise, you guys in the comment section kept telling me that it was a part of a bigger series. And since I read those comments, I've been thinking and pondering, what is this series truly about? So today, I'm going to be watching a video called Starker Lore, A Complete History of the Zone. Now, I know absolutely nothing about this franchise that apparently has been around for a while. And apparently, when I was looking at this video, I saw that there was something about a movie called Stalker. So, I will check out a, the movie on my own time. I'm not going to react to it because I don't do movie reactions here. Um, but I'm just very curious about this whole series since people mentioned that it was a series in my, uh, my reaction video. So, without saying anything else, we're going to go ahead and click play in this bad boy in 3, 2, 1... Go. Welcome to the zone. Oh, wait. This video is also made by Into the Zone. Wanted to say that. All right, here we go. Zone. I got water with me. In today's episode, we'll be discussing the history of the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone, the disaster oh. that led to its existence, and the adventures. So it has to do with Chernobyl. I actually also watched the show not that long ago, uh, both before leaving and coming back from Tennessee. To take place within it. This is a long and rich story, one that is decades in the making, and one that is dear to my heart. Before we begin, I would just like to issue a small spoiler warning. This video contains many spoilers for the Stalker series, and if you haven't already played the games yourself, I would encourage you to do so. Also, if you enjoy the content, feel free to like and subscribe for more Stalker-themed content. Let's see. And if you haven't checked out my real-life stalking videos, the links are in the description below. Without further ado, let's get started. That's also another reason why I'm uh, watching this video, is because the same guy who made the SCP uh, Dollhouse and Overlord videos is also planning on making a film about Stalker. That's another reason why I want to get into this series, so I know what's going on in that film when he's, whenever they're done making it. Uh, I think, remember from off the top of my head, his name is Evan Royalty. Started. All right, let's get into this. Pre-emission history. Our story begins in the 1960s with the Soviet-controlled Institute of Crop Selection and Genetics. Officially, this government agency's role was to perfect crop selection programs and increase food production throughout the Soviet Union. The Institute was not unlike the United States FDA, constantly doing research on nutrition, crop yields, and food distribution. Unofficially, the story is much different, though. Unbeknownst to the public, the Institute was created to research what is known as consciousness control. Over the years, moderate success was reached. Consciousness control, is that the creature that was controlling those uh, soldiers, turning those soldiers into like zombies in that video I watched? when researchers began to insert simple commands into the minds of wild animals. This research continued for years, and due to the promise that it showed, it received expanded funding and increased personnel that was assigned to the Institute. In 1981, the project had become so large that it required a facility to continue operating at full efficiency. Farmsteads and a large factory were constructed. Mm. New infrastructure was installed <clears throat> and hidden from the public eye. The building blocks of a Lab X-18 
were laid underneath the factory, deep in the earth. As the facility was being built and the project proceeding ahead as scheduled, an unplanned disaster almost destroyed the project forever. Chernobyl disaster. In 1986, yep. the VI Lenin Nuclear Power Station, a large nuclear reactor located near Chernobyl, sent out an alert. The power plant was experiencing a massive power surge in reactor number four, and all attempts at an emergency shutdown were futile. I also guess that's a good thing. I just watched the uh, whole Chernobyl series quite recently because now that I'm watching Stalker, it's going to make more sense because, you know, the Chernobyl disaster, and now I know the full extent of it. Not only by watching the show, but looking up uh, stuff off screen. The technicians in Reactor 4 bravely attempted to stop the surge, but their struggle was in vain. Steam explosions began to cause the reactor to catch fire, destroying the facility and sending a cloud of radioactive fallout into the atmosphere. Chernobyl and the nearby village of Pripyat were evacuated. <coughs> the radioactive cloud drifted over most of Western Russia as well as parts of Eastern European countries. Following the disaster, the residents located within 400 kilometers were permanently relocated and the Chernobyl exclusion zone was created. After the government ensured that civilian activity was minimal in the exclusion zone, a Soviet group of workers nicknamed the Liquidators were brought into the mm. zone. The liquidators were used to quickly construct a temporary containment shelter around the remains of Reactor 4 in an attempt to contain excess radiation from leaking into the zone. The workers called this massive concrete and steel construction the sarcophagus. Yes. Toward the end of 1986, the construction of Lab X-18 is halted and bit. the Institute of Crop Selection and Genetics is shut down. This shutdown would not last long, however, as reports of odd entities and anomalies began to trickle into the Soviet government. The radiation that saturated the exclusion zone was producing unforeseen changes to the environment. In 1987, the Soviet government re-established the old Institute of Crop Selection and Genetics as the newly minted Agoprom Research Institute. The institute begins to treat irradiated soil in the hopes that someday the exclusion zone will become habitable again. In 1989, a small team of scientists known as the Group take interest in the exclusion zone due to its low population and remoteness. They began to experiment with a newly found energy field called the New Sphere, which would allow the scientists to alter human consciousness. Okay. The group set up a secret research what operation. What we saw in that stalker animation a few weeks ago. Operation within the heart of the zone, utilizing many antennas and the remains of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. The Sea Consciousness Project is born, and seven scientists continue their clandestine research, culminating in the seven forming a collective consciousness. The group is unable to foresee the consequences of creating such a consciousness until it was too late. The tear in the new sphere caused the area around the NPP to become unstable. The group worked tirelessly to maintain their control of the area. On December 26, 1991, the Soviet Union collapses. Yeah. Many small republics break away from the USSR and with the help of their new NATO allies declare independence. Most Soviet operations in these new states are ceased and several research laboratories in the zones fail due to losing Soviet government funding. Mm. The group and other former Soviet researchers in the zone are not willing to leave or stop their research, and the newly formed Ukrainian government is unable to forcibly remove the scientists. 2001, strange phenomena reported. In the decade after the fall of the Soviet Union, mm. the zone became a center of attraction and wonder. Reports of strange phenomenon close to the Chernobyl nuclear power plant spread through the ex-Soviet Union. More and more civilians began to come and tour the zone for brief periods of time, but after a bus of tourists exploring Pripyat vanishes without a trace, the Ukrainian government restricts access to the zone completely. Mm. During this time, the Agroprom Research Institute begins to work with the group on the Sea Consciousness Project. So not only did this whole project start with just testing props and all that stuff but it also started with uh trying to un to mind control people and that's how it's proceeded into everything else in 2005 changes are felt in the zone many experience symptoms of paranoia the weather begins to change and earthquakes are felt in localized small tremors hurricane winds are observed for the first time in the zone 2006 Emission. The emission? On March 4, 2006, a blinding light is seen for miles around the zone, high above the old Chernobyl nuclear power plant. For two hours, the light creates a small sun that bathes the area in blinding light. Onlookers who stare at the light for too long are blinded. 
the light suddenly disappears. Reports state that the light seemed to go off almost like a light bulb is turned off, or like an electrical device loses power. That was another thing that was in that animation. The light going off in the sky and every, all those uh, Russian soldiers taking cover. Huh. I just wanted to say that because I, I do remember those details from, those, uh, from that animation. April 12th, the light returns. <laughs> the clouds around the light begin to disappear as they are evaporated. After a few moments of light and silence, a crash sounding like thunder is heard for minutes, much longer than any natural thunder. Again, once the sound disappears, there is silence. The ground begins to shake, and in Moscow, a 6.9 earthquake is detected. As the sky continued to glow, a rescue team was put into place by the Ukrainian government to evacuate personnel out of the zone. The light continued and began to bathe the zone in an unknown radiation halting rescue efforts, and almost certainly killing all unprotected inhabitants. Eesh. After the event, an investigation team reported that the center of the explosion was within one kilometer of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. On June 10th, the zone grows almost five kilometers after what is called the second disaster. Physics-defying objects and events were reported by soldiers, API researchers, and those crazy enough to still live inside the zone. It's like the whole Chernobyl disaster led to the experimental failure and like at a, a opening between realities. That's what I, I'm starting to understand. I'm going to look more into the stalker stuff in the future. If you guys want me to do more reactions of them, let me know in the comment section below. I will willingly do them. Eventually, reports of strange and mutated animals begin to leak to the general public. <coughs> Most military and research assets in the zone were killed. As the zone began to expand once more, civilians located in nearby villages are evacuated away from the expansion. A new zone is cordoned off in an attempt to keep civilians out. In response to the zone's unexpected expansion, the Ukrainian military begins to mobilize for a sortie into the very center of the zone. Their objective is to destroy the zone, and the group was given permission to utilize nuclear weapons if necessary. Why? Upon entering the, place the zone, is, the place is already irradiated with radiation. What's the point of setting off nuclear devices if you're just going to make it even worse? Escorts soon realized that without the proper equipment for dealing with the lethal radiation levels, or without the means to evade the newly discovered physical anomalies, most of their unit were doomed to perish. Due to the lack of operable intelligence on the zone, many of the ground forces were killed before they reached their objective. Mm. The few of the task force that did make it to the center of the zone were almost instantly killed by another emission much smaller than the first. The survivors of the emission were left scattered across the zone, with few supplies and no hope of rescue or support. In the wake of their task force's failure, they were left to fend for themselves in the harsh new environment. A squad leader named Captain Chenko sabotages all the radios and communication equipment in an attempt to keep his soldiers from leading more people into the zone on a rescue mission. Chenko's squad decides to remain in the zone and dedicates their unit to fighting the evils of the zone and to keep it from expanding at all costs. The unit rebrands itself as Duty. It's 2007 duty. to 2010. In the aftermath of the massive failure to contain the zone, scientists were unable to explain the zone's expansion or the increased anomalies. Scientists began to send expeditions into the zone, most of which ended in a complete failure. A few of the lucky teams sent into the zone to gather data return talking of mutated animals, ghosts, zombies, and creatures with psychic abilities. In 2009, which is also something we saw in that animation, a group of scientists creates a device that can detect anomalies from 10 meters away, making traversing the zone much more possible. That winter, a group of researchers is sent with new protective equipment and the new detectors into the zone is a field test. The group returned home without an incident. By 2010, expeditions began to become more commonplace. Artifacts are discovered by some anomalies and become highly sought after. Along with artifacts, the first blowouts are discovered. Blowouts. 2011. While the advancements of detector technology allowed for more expeditions into the zone, emergence the Ukrainian of the monolith. Is that the name of the creature? The ones that are able to control their minds. I remember somebody in the comment section trying to tell me that, but it's been a while since I've seen that comment. The state security service began to plan another military operation into the center of the Chernobyl exclusion zone. The goal of this operation was to take control of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant and to mm. eliminate the source of anomalies and mutations occurring within the zone. 
Commander Zavagenstev was named the leader of the task force and led his men in an airborne parachute drop into the very center of the zone. Similar to the first military incursion, almost instantly, a sudden omission led to the death of almost the entire task force. The battered survivors led by Zagonostev wandered the zone after their failed mission and eventually found their way to a duty outpost. The military personnel were absorbed into the duty faction and began to fight the zone at all costs. Around the time of the second military incursion into the zone, leaked reports of people surviving in the zone leaked to the general population. Many people from all walks of life begin to venture into the zone, ranging from researchers to looters and adventurers. The government names these individuals as stalkers, as a catch-all. That's where the name comes from. That would explain why that guy from the animation I saw was fighting everyone he came across. He wasn't a part of the military doing their, his job. He was a bounty hunter. That makes more sense. I feel like I'm learning a little bit more than... A lot from this video. ...term for those who enter the zone. Initially, the government ignores the stalkers, but after several contraband artifacts from the zone are found in civilian hands, outside of the zone, they are forced to act. In early 2011, stalkers begin to report feral and almost zombie-like humans acting in the zone. One of the most chilling stories of these zombies comes from a lone stalker in Yantar, who encountered zombies who were speaking English to one another. This group was later confirmed to be the remnants of a tour group who were lost almost a decade earlier in the zone. Oh. On February 4th, the government begins to crack down on illegal stalking done by unsanctioned individuals. These illegal stalkers are targeted and arrested, and 10 stalker trading posts are raided. The operation results in over 70 arrests. In September, mm. a team of stalkers disappear when they attempt to bypass the Brain Scorcher, a device that is seemingly kills all who approach. The group soon reappears as a heavily armed and militarized group calling itself Monolith. The group became highly aggressive towards other stalkers and claimed that they were defending the zone, which they believed was a living entity. They also begin to spread rumors of a device called a Wish Granter, a device capable of rewriting reality to the user's will. Monolith members dig in at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant and claim it as their primary base of operations, hoarding weaponry and supplies and multiple surrounding caches. Around the same time that the Monolith faction rose to power, a small group of free stalkers named Strelik, Fang, and Ghost penetrate the Brain Scorcher using a hidden path without any side effects. Hmm. Similar to the military's task force sent into the center of the zone, a massive emission is unleashed from the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. The resulting emission was so powerful that it changes the landscape of the zone forever. Stalkers soon find that paths that were once clear of hazardous anomalies are now filled with clusters of anomalous activity, forcing stalkers to reevaluate their routes. Eesh. New anomalies are discovered, some becoming invisible to the naked eye. The resulting changes to the zone spark a bloody conflict between stalker factions, forcing the factions to fight for new territory and safe pathways. The emission also wipes out a large military presence at an army warehouse. The soldiers stationed there are killed almost instantly, leaving only 20 estimated survivors. Wow. The survivors that were unable to make contact with their superiors, which led the surviving soldiers to believe that they had been left for dead in the middle of the zone. Later in September of the same year, a group of stalkers called the Diggers discover a massive cache of radioactive material at a location known as the Garbage. The News garbage. of this radioactive gold rush reaches far across the zone, causing many factions to make a play for the valuable resources located there. The Diggers begin to ambush anyone that attempts to claim what they consider to be their property. Soon after the Digger ambushes begin, Bandits begin to move into the area and form a provisional and crude form of government. They begin to demand taxes from lone stalkers and other factions for passage and protection. Reports of stalkers and researchers being gang pressed into the bandit service start to pass through the zone. Mm. Around this time, a small scout team of Freedom Faction members is dispatched to look for a path to the abandoned army warehouse in an attempt to claim the equipment and weaponry for their expansion. While searching for the warehouses, the scout team hears rumors of a small town in the zone which was left almost unaffected by the changes to the local environment. That's not changed. Chekhov, the leader of the Freedom Faction, sends a company-sized element of men to search for the rumored town. Later, 
It is revealed to Freedom Leadership that Duty is also desperately searching for the town, and almost half of the Duty faction is working its way deep into the zone. September 10th. Events in Clear Sky take place. A mercenary named Scar awakens from unconsciousness following the massive blowout. He is recruited by a faction called Clear Sky, Clear Sky. and is tasked with hunting down the Free Stalkers who penetrated the Brain Scorcher. Strelik, Fang, and Ghost are determined to be threats to the zone. On October 25th, the Ukrainian government issues a shoot on sight order for anyone trespassing the military cordon, following a deadly firefight between a unit of Stalkers and a military garrison. Around this time, Duty and Freedom both reach the secret town of Lemansk, leading to a massive battle over the town and its secrets. Shortly after the battle, it is reported that large groups of aggressive stalkers have been seen returning from the Brain Scorcher wearing monolith uniforms and brandishing their equipment. And now these uh, versions of the, mon the monolith, these new guys, it appears they are the zombie-like ones, if I'm not correct. In early November, members of Clear Sky, along with their new agent Scar, begin to mobilize for another incursion into the heart of the zone in an attempt to find and neutralize Strelik. The operation, similar to any other recorded thus far, ends in a massive emission which destroys the entire Clear Sky task force. 2012. Events of Shadow of Chernobyl take place. On May 1st, an amnesiac stalker known as the Marked One awakes in a secure bunker. He is cared for by Sidrovich, a dealer and stalker outfitter of sorts. The Marked One wakes up to find out that all of his equipment is gone, save for his PDA, which only states, Kill Strelik. The Marked One embarks on his mission. On May 12th, <laughs> Captain Maximenko reaches the Agaprom Research Institute, discovering that it is a front for the clandestine organization known as The Group. Around this time, the Mark I later regains some of his memory, and it is revealed to him that he is Strelik. Strelik disables the Brain Scorcher and consequently opens up a new previously unexplored part of the zone for many stalkers. With the Brain Scorcher deactivated, the military begins to plan another incursion into the zone under the auspects of Operation Monolith, a massive military operation dedicated to reclaiming the zone and reinstituting law and order. Hmm. May 20th. Strelik destroys the sea consciousness, and as a result, the Monolith faction is severely weakened. Hundreds of stalkers begin to break away from Monolith mental control and begin to wander the zone again. With the weakening of Monolith and the Brain Scorcher disabled, free stalkers begin to move into the zone. Beard and Grouse establish a base of operations in a beach ship near Xanton. Bandits begin to flow into the area under the guidance of Sultan in order to keep the peace and extort protection taxes from lone stalkers. Soon after, a free stalker named Gary discovers a path around the Jupiter area, which leads to the establishment of another stalker settlement and Yanov Station. Shortly after the establishment of Yanov Station, a Freedom Task Force under the command of Loki is dispatched to scout Loki. the very center of the zone. They arrive near Yanov Station to find a detachment of duty agents under the command of Lieutenant Colonel Shulka. A battle ensues resulting in massive casualties on both sides, as well as collateral damage in the form of- Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I'm getting confused here, but I'm trying to understand the best I can. I'm gonna be watching videos like this a couple times, maybe this one a few more times after this. But I'm gonna talk, look into more uh, stalker informational videos and see if there's any games that I could play as well. Even if I know the information that's going on here, I probably would not remember doing any gameplay in the future. So let's see what happens. Free stalkers. In the climax of the battle, an emission was detected by Zulu, a duty faction member. Knowing that there was no viable cover from the emission, save for Yanov itself, Loki ordered a ceasefire and it invited the duty force to take refuge with his men at Yanov. As a result of this action, to this day, Yanov remains a neutral meeting ground between the two warring factions. August 3rd, events of Call of Pripyat take place. Call of Pripyat. On August 3rd, the Ukrainian government initiates Operation Fairway, a surgical strike into the zone. The goal of Fairway is to establish government control of the zone by striking at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant itself. Why? The operation meets an utter failure when the helicopters transporting the special forces team suddenly lose power and free fall to the ground. 
SBU agent Major Dektarev is dispatched to the zone in an attempt to uncover what took place and to find who may be responsible. While investigating the disaster, the Major discovers that the survivors of Operation Fairway have been holed up in an abandoned laundromat in Pripyat. He begins to form alliances with three stalkers in the area and moves his newly coined ragtag unit into the abandoned city. Together, the Free Stalkers and the survivors of Fairway continue with their original mission. They push into the center of the zone and skirmish with the vastly diminished monolith forces still there. Upon securing the center of the zone, the task force is able to regain communications with the SBU and military command. A relief force is sent to the center of the zone and survivors are evacuated. Hmm. Strelik also makes plans to leave with the remaining members of Fairway and offers to share his knowledge and experience with the Ukrainian government. Hmm. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you had a comfy time with me. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe for more stalker content. Until next time guys, I'll see you in the zone. Huh. Okay, so that both answered some questions I had and raised a lot of new ones, but I definitely am going to check out this channel, so I'm going to subscribe and like this video. And I'll definitely be checking out more uh, stalker content in the future so I can understand the whole franchise. I'm also going to do some research to see if I can find some video games on Steam as well to see if, if I can play this. It seems like something interesting to really get into in terms of both uh, a story and a movie point standpoint. That's what intrigues me right now about this franchise. But either way, I'm going to be looking into more stalker content in the future, so look forward to that. But with that being said, guys, hopefully you enjoyed today's reacting video. Like and subscribe and all that stuff, guys, and I will see you in the next reaction video. Bye-bye!